What is the best pre-med major, and is there one? I'm Mike, UCLA Medical School graduate, now anesthesiology resident in New York City, and I've helped thousands of pre-meds get into medical school just like you. Let's talk majors. First, I cheated a little bit. This pre-med major doesn't really exist. There are majors like biology, neuroscience, and psychobiology, whose major requirements overlap with the pre-med requirements from the AAMC. These are the shared core requirements that your medical schools also expect you to complete. And roughly they include a year of bio with lab, a year of gen chem, o chem with labs, a year of physics, biochemistry, a year of English. And some med schools may require additional courses like math and statistics, psychology or sociology in language or ethics. And of course, there are non-pre-med majors like business development or English literature. And the major requirements for those majors may look like Econ 101 or Shakespearean Theory 102. And this means that in addition to actually graduating from your English literature major by taking that Shakespearean course, you'll also have to tack on all of those pre-med requirements on your own time. So now that we've defined pre-med versus non-pre-med majors, the question still stands. What is the best major? Said in a different way, which major maximizes my chances of becoming accepted to medical school? Let's take a look at the data that we have. According to the AAMC table A-17, the most common majors were biological sciences, other at number two, physical sciences at number three, and social sciences at number four. About 60% of pre-med applicants, over 30,000 of them, were biological science majors. 8% were physical science majors, and another 8% were social science majors. Now, which major had the highest percentage of accepted students? Math and statistics had an acceptance rate of 52%. Humanities at 51.8%. Physical sciences at 49.5%. And the most common major, biological sciences, came dead last at 43%. And so the obvious conclusion here is that being a biological science major is sandbagging your admissions odds and that you need to convert right now to a math and statistics major. Please do not take away that conclusion. That is completely wrong. Remember, over 30,000 pre-meds applied with biological science majors, and 13,000 of them were accepted. And for math majors, there were 344 who applied, and 180 who were accepted. The sample sizes are so vastly different that these percentages aren't comparable at all. Second, correlation does not mean causation. Did they get in because they were math majors? Or were they already more inclined to have a higher admissions rate? Because it takes a certain caliber of student to commit to a really hard math major. And if you look closely at the data, which tells you the average MCAT and GPAs per major, you'll see that math majors have a slightly higher MCAT average. Was it the slightly higher MCAT that drove their higher admissions odds? All in all, the data is just far too messy to pull out any meaningful conclusion. Nothing is going to be statistically significant with those sample sizes, and it's all just a bunch of numbers that will serve more to confuse you than help you. With that being said, a lot of your decisions in your pre-med journey do matter. And a lot of them, like this discussion about major choice, is far more nuanced than we originally thought. If you need help figuring out the right decision for your doctor dreams, the Pre-Med Catalyst Mentorship Program guides you every step of the way. If that sounds appealing to you, check out the link in the description box to learn more. One thing to remember when choosing a major is that certain majors objectively have lower GPAs than others. If you chose a math major because you looked at this data and falsely assumed that this 10% was because they chose the math major, you might get into a position where your GPA tanks because surprise, surprise, it's very hard to get A's in very difficult math classes. Now you've sandbagged yourself and originally you had wanted that extra 10% of admissions chances, but now you dropped your chances significantly because your GPA is 3.2. The worst part of this is that so many thousands of pre-meds follow this same advice every single year, and they end up in majors like math and bioengineering and computer science that they never liked in the first place. Don't choose a major, especially a hard one, if you do not love it. There is no need to shoot yourself in the foot and make your coursework harder than it needs to be. 
a reminder that your application is more than your GPA and it is more than your MCAT. And if you are spending 20 additional hours than the next student, because your major classes are harder every single week, those 20 hours will over time weaken the strength of your letters of recommendation. It will weaken the strength of your resume and extracurriculars. Now, here is an important argument for the other side. I don't believe it's actually in everyone's best interest to just choose the easiest major. If you are truly interested in another major, like computer science, for example, that can often be a huge value add on your application, especially if you bring those skills tangibly to your extracurriculars. For example, we worked with a student who was a bioengineer who produced pulse oximeters for her EMT ambulance company, or the pre-med who was also a computer science major who built software to help the community free clinic offer social services and addiction help resources to patients who came to the clinic. With this extra skill set, you carve out a very clearly defined niche for yourself. You are the pre-med with a poli-sci major who has significantly advocated for abortion reform in their home state of Iowa. Don't do any of these things just because they're unique, because at the end of the day, impact is most important. If you have all these majors and minors and certifications and skills, but you have nothing tangible to show for it, then you have nothing that catches the eye of your dream medical school. You do not stand out based on your major alone. You stand out based on what you have done. And if the major helps you do better, more impactful things, then it may very well be worth it. And remember, nothing really beats real examples. So if you'd like to see some actual AMCAS applications, look at the exact sorts of things that got real pre-meds accepted into real medical schools. I've linked our application database. It has eight full applications available for you for free right now. Link in the description box below. So you don't have to be a non-science major to get into medical school. In fact, just as a reminder, the majority of pre-meds, 13,000 of them, got into medical school as a biological sciences major. And while the data isn't clear on whether it helps to be a non-science major, if you are truly interested, it can be a huge opportunity to stand out. Or you can just be a bio major, and that streamlines all of your prerequisites to match the exact ones that medical schools want, and you can use all that extra time to build a strong application, to build a strong resume. Simply put, majors do not drive acceptances. Impact on your extracurriculars, strong recommendations, those are the things that earn acceptances. Choosing your major is still an important decision that must be made carefully. Because while your major alone may not guarantee an acceptance, it may very well put you on this vicious cycle where you're studying more, getting worse grades, all because the major is just so difficult that it may very well guarantee a rejection. Thank you for watching and I hope this helped.